Hi, welcome back to Celebrating Culture. We're here tonight at the home of Frank Maselli, who's the Honorary Council of Italy, and I'm with Vince Ferragamo. Vince, welcome to the show. Charlie, good to be on the show, thanks. So what's it like being back here at, at Frank's house? Oh God, this is, you know, we always enjoyed coming back to New Orleans. And since the first time I met Joe Maselli in Chicago, when I was inducted in the Hall of Fame, Sports Hall of Fame, he came up to me and invited me to come to New Orleans for this banquet and to, to meet the people in New Orleans who were so excited to, to meet us and to raise money for the Cultural Center. And I told him, I said, sure, I'd love to come. So I've been coming ever since. I mean, I've been coming back maybe 10, 12 years to this event. We enjoy and having you back. It's, it's great a, to see you it's every, fantastic. every year. fantastic. The people are great. What a great host the Maselli family people. is. Yeah, and it's just really, it's really fun to be here. And it was great to, to see the Cultural Center and, and all the support that we could help them and to raise money. and and to build this new exciting uh, facility. That, that was back when show. it was just getting going. It was just getting started. They had this beautiful facility right downtown on Canal Street. I want to thank you for that. And it was fun. It was fun to see it go in. And, you know, we were one of the, I mean, Tommy Lasorda is the one who got me kind of started with it. And then we all came back for the event, and it was a super event. That has worked out. That was 1978. That has been a big benefit to the Italian community here. And they just yeah. renovated it as well. Frank I understand is they have. He's redoing the museum. It's going to be fun. Come, it's going to be fun. I Interactive it. now. That's great. And then all the well, sports it's all that new technology they have now. You can do it. <laughs> you <laughs> so, got to keep it yeah, going. Yeah, you got to keep going. When, you know, yeah. going back, I was so impressed a couple of years ago when you spoke. You mm -hmm. talked about how you, the phone would ring and, and your dad, your family was, we speak English here. You know, what, what are some of the principles that your family put in from into you guys? Well, you know, as you're Italian, Charles, yeah. you know, and, and it's growing up Italian, it's like, you know, your mother and father, the pride of the family, and going to grandma's house on Sunday afternoon. Absolutely. And, and you know, it just, it's just having the respect. For, and then sitting down at the dinner table and eating and having a great big meal, spending two to three hours there. Having, laughing, telling jokes, reminiscing stories. And this was, the, this was our life as a kid growing up. You know, it wasn't so much about sports. Well, we, we got involved with sports, but it was just so much fun to, to have that close family knit support that we had and, and uh, so we always got together, we always got together at the holidays and we still do today. We still try to keep that tradition Absolutely. alive. And uh, so everywhere I go throughout the country, I played some ball in, in LA, obviously. I went to Buffalo. Went to Buffalo, met a great family of the DePaulos. Ilio DePaulo was a great wrestler. Wrestled with my father-in-law, Joe Scarpello, for many years. And went to his house, he had the bocce court in the backyard. Bocce is so a big thing. You play the bocce ball, from, right? From a five-year-old to 105. Doesn't matter. It doesn't. Anybody can play. Yeah. Right? You just roll the balls. And he would get down in his little stance and he'd roll the ball. And, uh, you know, he was one of the great all time wrestlers. And he wrestled with my father in law. They were really close knit. And so when I went there, it was almost like family. And we went to his home for Thanksgiving. And you know, it was a Thanksgiving meal. You always have the pasta before. My mom used to make a lasagna pasta. And then she would serve it before the turkey dinner. And my brothers would get to the table, they would unloosen their belt and sit down and just eat and manjad. You know? yeah. and, and you just ate and ate and ate. And then after that, you took all the turkey and all the trimmings came out afterwards and you just ate and ate. So it's like, that was a tradition, a family tradition. You have the pasta first and do that. But I went there, they did the same thing in Buffalo. Ilio de Paolo did the same. And so we, it was almost like being at home. And then after that, of course, I came back. I went to Green Bay and I, then I retired. But, you know, life after football has been great because I have my own family. I have my three daughters, and uh, we kind of try to follow the family traditions at Christmas time, Christmas Eve. We get all get together, and, uh, and so we do have you have Italian wine. sausage? To us, that's a that's for that's, us. You gotta have it. But yeah. at Christmas time, what is it, Charlie? It's the fish, right? It is. The but fish. my wife doesn't do the fish, okay. so no pesce. No. So uh, we just <laughs> eat everything else. else. Yeah. Everything. I got okay. My, I got my, my yeah. list of there. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. I have my daughter who's a vegetarian, so you oh, know, you get, but oh. as Italians, we can eat all kind of vegetarian dishes. So eggplant parmesan. So as an Italian, yeah. What, what you thought is the gen? What would you pass on as far as the dedication to excel? I mean, because clearly you excelled. You know, you went to Cal, you had a great career there, and then you go on to the pros. You, you were just focused, it seemed, that, you know, the drive. Well, I, I think that, you know, as, as I go through life and I, you know, after football, and, you know, of course, football was a big part of my life, being playing for the Los Angeles Rams, but you learn about the steps that were required of you to be successful. And those are, those don't change, even after football, if you go into business. You know, hard work, dedication, all that is. But the P's, and it's not proper preparation prevents 
blank right. performance. Right, yes, exactly. But it's more important that you prepare, you have a passion to do what you do. And that's what we had, we had passion. We were precise in what we did, we were patient, we persevered, you know, and then we had profit at the end. Sure. And if you do those kind of things, I think, you know, in life today, that really, that really is important. And it applies to you on the football field and being a professional athlete, and it also applies to you in business as you well. You know, and, and we heard that uh, from other people as well that we've talked to. That seems to be a, a basic Italian principle, what you're talking about, the passion, the awareness, right. just the ethics. And, and passion, you know, is so much a big part of it because we're passionate people. You know, we're, we're, we're a romantic language in the first place. <laughs> we yeah, are. Roma and Italian. And it's like everything is expressive. And so we, and we feel good about it. We, we're... Uh, and, and when you do that, you're actually better at what you do. With your family, are your daughters still in California? Or are they? Yes, I have three daughters. Okay. And uh, we, uh, my oldest daughter is a, is a pediatrician, and my middle daughter is in fashion and design, and my youngest daughter is uh, into traveling, and she's a foreign language major, so she's a foreign language mm -hmm. wants to be a foreign and language teacher. And your winery? Teacher. How's your winery doing? Oh, it's it's fantastic, and it's named after my three daughters, Cara, Vanessa, and Jenna. We call it Caressa J. Okay. And it's a super Tuscan. We grow the grapes right in Orange County on my property. And it's just a small boutique winery, but it's fantastic. We've gotten gold medals the last four years at the LA International Wine Competition. It's great. I became a sommelier myself. You did? I did. And, you know, it's a year-long process to get, to get certified. And it was fun. I just love it. It's, it's part of our background. It's part of our family. And uh, we really enjoy it. We brought it. so much to America, like the fruits from Sicily, but also the vines, the vines. We did. So, so did you bring Italian vines? Is <laughs> that your venue? They were here already. I mean, the Sangiovese was ah, here. All right. So, uh, and the Sangiovese is probably the main ingredient grape for a Super Tuscan. Okay. And then you apply, you know, the Cabernet, the Merlot, or Syrah, or you know, Primitivo, whatever else you want to put in with it. But ours is an 80% Sangiovese, and some of it's a Brunello, some of it's a Chianti Classico style. And uh, the other 20% is a Cabernet, so it gives it the body and the, wow. and the, and the, and the body to the wine. So it really, they blend well together, and, and so we've had a lot of success with it, and the grapes grow well. You know, you can't make good wine with bad grapes. No, you can't. It's you have to make good wine with good grapes. Absolutely. So we, uh, we pride ourselves in growing the right grapes. Great. And the last thing will be the Superdome. Yeah. You know, did you play? You played, I guess, in Tulane Stadium a little bit. Or did you? Did we you? did. We did in, in college when I was at Nebraska. Okay. Played the Sugar Bowl in, you did. at the old Tulane Stadium. All right. And now they moved the the uh, the Sugar Bowl to the Superdome. You're right. And the Superdome is a crazy place. It is. So what did, what did who you think? That you <laughs> I was here for the game when the Rams played them in the NFC Championship All right. game, and the decimals were. 110, 112. They had the reading going on yes. on, the, on the chart. And, but the most impressive thing was Gail Benson walking across the field with Houdat Nation, arm in arm with a couple of her concierge group. And they were playing the music and they had the fans going crazy. I was really, I got goosebumps watching her it across amazing. that field. Yes. It was really good to get that fan base excited. And I was, it was unfortunate they didn't win the game. Right. They had the no call at the end. But, you know, that was, that, was a, that was a really good team. They have a good coach, and they had a, a great quarterback playing. Well, so Tom Benson a, did a lot as well. So he, he had did. the Benson boogie, and it just seems that Gail yeah. has done a lot to make sure that professionalism, that community atmosphere stays with it. So I wanted yeah. to see your take on it coming in from out of town. Yeah, the no call really hurt everybody. Yeah. You know, it, 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 you kinda, it was kind of tarnished the game because it, they should call the game as fair as possible. Right. And if you see something, call the play. You know, yeah. don't hide from your, from what you believe right. in. That's true. You know, I mean, it's like if you believe in something, go for it. Right. No. You know, but, but, and so, but uh, it, it hurt, it hurt the team, and who knows what would have happened in that game? Who knows? But yeah. the, the, the who that nation? Who though, you saw that 110 decibels. That is it was unbelievable. Unbelievably, that rocks. And I remember when I played in there, Charlie. It was loud too yeah. back in the. And that's when they had Ricky Jackson. They had Pat, oh. Pat Swilling. Uh, they, uh, they had uh, Sam Mills at linebacker. They had a great defense. And the only way we could drive the ball is at the end of the game when I called my own place. I was going to ask you. Could yeah, you, just you making up stuff. I get in the huddle and say, hey, man, just get open. Run that post route. I'm going to throw the ball. Just get open. And so <laughs> they get open, and we drove the ball. We kicked the winning field goal at the end of the game, much like they did in this game. Yes. 
in a different way, obviously. But um, you know, we were able to beat a tough New Orleans team. That was that was an era, and too. that was right when they were on the verge of really exploding and coming on. And uh, unfortunately, they had to play the Rams that day, and <laughs> we had a good team. Well, Vince, I want to thank you for being on the show, Charlie, and I want to do one thing that's mine. I want to say that I caught a Vince Ferragamo pass. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, hey, this is not the same size ball anymore, but you know, I can I can throw it. Yeah, but My grandson throws better than I do now, but hey, it's all right. So, all right, all right. You so ready to catch back it? Take a step all right, back? how about back it up? It, it, a little we're not going right. to go for like a long okay, distance don't, pass. Okay, don't don't go deep because you know you might drop it. All right, all right. Here we go. All right, all right. Good job, good job, Charlie. All right, all right. Good job. Thank you, man. All right, thank you. Let's go, Manja. The Oh, okay. All right. Oh, break. Secret break. Door. Oh, we're doing an interview. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> it's over there. That's where the that's where the room is. <laughs> we're leaving. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. All right. All right. No problem. This is incredibly awkward. Whatever. It's okay. It's, okay. What a great it's all right. We'll stop. What a great we'll stop. Yeah, it was good. We're at Frank's house. So where were we? That was the, we're, we're oh, going wait, to talk about. There's people, more people coming. Oh, okay. Is, yeah, is Nick leaving? Way. They just, oh they're leaving. They are. I'm, where the hell are they? Go down, you need they, to go down here. They went that way. I'm they, sorry, I'm interrupting. Oh, it's okay. It's face. all right. It's okay. We've been waiting it's for okay. this. Okay. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. What so we, we were, were talking, talking about, about the blind side. When you get blindsided. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. That happens all the time to me. You know, they can hit you any which way. They can hit the back of your head, the front of the head. Now you can't touch the quarterback. 